Hi, and welcome back. Meteor.js is often described as a reactive programming framework. And there's another thing that people have often described as reactive, and those are spreadsheets. So I'm going to explain a little bit the relation between the two. Also show you how you can use a, an atmosphere package that I made called Worksheet that will allow you to make spreadsheet or worksheet-like functionality in your Meteor apps. So let's look at a spreadsheet or worksheet example. So worksheets are particular tabs of a spreadsheet and they contain value cells and formula cells. So in this example, A1 is a value cell containing the value 4. A2 contains a value as well. And then A3 contains a formula cell, which we know because it starts with the equal sign and refers to the sum of A1 and A2. It can refer, in general, to any computation on other cells. Another nice feature of spreadsheets is that you can name the cells you're on. So for example, the cell I'm on, sheet 1, 8, 3, is referred to as subtotal. This number here, which we're going to use to calculate the tax rate, has been named tax rate. And when you do that, you can write formulas that, instead of referring to cryptic A1 and A2 values, refer to named ranges. These are almost like variables. So how would we define a spreadsheet like this in Meteor? Well, I started from the thought of what would we want uh, an object to look like? And then I built a package to make that happen. So I think that basically you would have a function called worksheet and you'd pass it an object and the object would have different fields. And a field could be a value field, like the tax rate. It could have an, a cell-looking name, like A1 or A2, or it could have a real uh, variable name. And then when you were computing the formulas, the JavaScript equivalent of formulas are just functions. And so subtotal would be the sum of A1 and A2. Total would be the product of subtotal and tax rate. Um, so that's basically what I envisioned, and I built an app, uh, a package to do that, which is being consumed by this app, and you can look at the variable WKS here. You can poke around at its various fields and see their values. You notice that they are not normal fields. They're actually JavaScript 5 property getters, and uh, we're seeing uh, how to do that there. And you can look at several fields at the same time and you see that they're currently 4, 5, and 9. And if we were to, say, want to bring back A1 down, we could subtract 1 from A1. And the next time we looked at the fields, voila, 3, 5, and 8. So that's pretty neat, huh? But it's a little bit tedious to have to look at uh, our variables only in the console, right? Could we maybe have a UI for this? And because of the implementation of this package, of course you can. What that looks like is you would simply build a template and that template would look at various fields from the WKS object. And of course, what else would you put them in but a table? And then all we have to do is expose this WKS object to the worksheet and so we do that via a helper. And uh, let's even throw on an event that uh, changes the value of our cell um, each time a TD is clicked on. That's all we have to do. We come back here, and when Meteor picks up our changes, when Meteor picks up our changes, ah, I did not include the call to render the template. And now when Meteor picks up our changes, voila! And of course, we are participating in Meteor's interactivity at all levels. We can use it in the console to increment properties, or we can use that click event that we defined. Don't you love JavaScript math? You might want to format these functions. So that is what the Denius worksheet package can do for you. I will very briefly show you its source code. It's very brief source code, but it covers some rather advanced concepts. So um, I'll only discuss two parts of them. That is 
uh, meteor reactive var and object defined property. So this is the entirety of the source code of this package. It's only 36 lines. And it turns out that for each field of the worksheet object, right, each one of these being a field, either we call define reactive property or define computed property based on whether the field refers to a function we'll call define computed property. If it doesn't, we'll call define reactive property. And either one of these create a reactive var and expose either a getter and setter for a value or a just a getter for a formula. And basically we talk to the reactive var. And that's all that's needed in order to participate in Meteor's full stack reactivity. In other words, the Blaze UI, the console, they're all entirely reactive. Now, are you excited about this? I, I would be very excited to use this in an app. Uh, I have a particular application in mind, but before you jump in to using it, I want you to understand a certain gotcha. If you don't know how Meteor uh, uses reactivity uh, via its tracker components, um, you're going to get a quick lesson. So in this example, we populate a variable current total from the worksheet total, which we can see there, and uh, we increment one of the uh, cells that the total depends on, and we saw earlier that the total had changed, right? So we would expect current total equals worksheet total to be false. Or is it? Or is it? Now, I'll show you the fix for it. If this was surprising to you, you'll actually have to go and look up the tracker documentation a little bit more to understand why it works that way. It's not actually a bug, it's desired behavior. It turns out that if you want to use the computed values before the next turn of the event loop, you need to call tracker.flush. So in this case, it's the same code but a tracker.flush ensures that the total will have changed by the time that we do this comparison. That's the only gotcha. You have to mind that, and it's actually a very good thing because uh, it allows us to batch up a bunch of updates and only execute them, uh, only execute the, the function that updates the total once, even though you might have changed several properties. So, that is how you can create a spreadsheet in Meteor. Again, the package implementing this is called Genius Worksheet. I've also put the uh, non-template parts of this into a JS fiddle so that you can play with this by opening a console in this JS fiddle. And also, the wonderful site MeteorPad also has this uh, implemented, but it uses the full Blaze UI. So you can just go here and uh, begin you know, using the console or, or clicking on the items uh, directly. So I hope that's an informative uh, walk down creating reactive spreadsheets. Use this component. Let me know how it works for you. Um, think about this uh, object definition format. If, the, if, you, if you think that's a sensible way to define a relationship um, that defines an object that keeps all of its fields up to date. And thank you for watching.